like I've always refined like my strategy, but it's always been that thing of like the goalpost shifting, mm. you know. So, um, but I have had to teach myself how to be grateful and mm. um, enjoy the wins. How quickly do you turn around? For instance, you know the plan A, the plan A uh, will inevitably fail within the first impact of any of any war. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so any how, contact uh, with the enemy. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. So how yeah. do you how do you how do you refer back to a plan B real quick? Good point. Um, man, like the plan A never really seems to work. And yeah. I think from the outside looking in, it probably looks like it always does. Yeah. Because I know looking at famous artists, I'm like, man, they just like put some shit out and everyone eats it up and it just works. And then you hear them talk about music and you're like, no, it didn't. No. So I guess like, I guess, um, yeah, I don't know. Like I, I think for me it's like if plan A doesn't work, just like, Tweak it, do the same thing again, or work twice as hard. Streetculturetv.com Beatbox created. Killer Keller. And we need to talk about world music and street culture. Killer Keller podcast. Sick. Send it up. Ladies and gentlemen. Killer Keller podcast, live and direct, central London or as central as you need to be, choose to be, want to be, you don't want to be anywhere else and anywhere else doesn't count, it's out of the geographical range uh, and our range on this podcast is particularly broad, uh, big shout out to all the sharing carers, people that have uh, been spotting the podcast from jump from day one um, and uh, if you want more of that jump, uh, stepping forward we've got the Keller Vision app, free download, iPhone, Android for your sporting arts and more. How sponsors the mighty GK Nifty Heads have a massive 100,000 play to earn NFTs to give away to the streets. Just hit the link in the description or go to gkniftyheads.com and get ready for Hoddle Wars Summer 2024. <sighs> when I say broad, I mean broad. We are going international, global travellers, you understand. We don't just stay in one place around here. Uh, music and street culture is a calling, you understand. And uh, this gentleman has been uh, calling shots over in Australia for, uh, for a while. He's been representative, uh, uh, numero uno in the Australian grime scene, no less. And uh, it's a fucking pleasure to have him here. The mighty, the man, the myth. He, and, and if you don't know, get to know him. Goes by the name of Nerve. How you doing, brother? <laughs> oh, pleasure. That was one of the best intros I've ever heard in my life. Serves you right, richly deserved. <laughs> yes. In our neck of, the, in the neck of the woods. How you uh, been? Yeah, good, bro. It's been sick being over here, man. <laughs> yeah, I've been I've been very good. I've been busy. Um, yeah, it's cool to have an opportunity to talk about it as well because yeah. it's kind of like a funny story. The whole reason I'm I'm here right now and like I've been planning to come over here like and wanting to come over here for a long, long time. Self-fulfilling so, prophecy. Yeah, 100%, man. Like just, you know, like putting – thoughts into actions and then just living it out man so i'm just stoked to be here bro and it, yeah it, stoked to chat about it stoked that we are having you here yeah man yo you know you know the madness is uh if a tree falls in the woods do you hear it you know it's good to get a podcast in when you're in the area because yeah 100 percent. documenting that journey that poignant moment in what is your f first trip over yeah, first trip over, yeah. First trip over for like music and just doing all this stuff, man. A lot of sightseeing. I went and saw Big Ben, like, you know, all them ones. Like, <laughs> ticket off the list. Yeah, ticket off the list. Like, um, you know, obviously working on music pretty much nonstop since mm. I got here. And I think like that was that was always the plan and the goal. And like there's so much talent mm. over here, man. And I'm very like influenced by the sounds of this area. So... Mm. I think it's just kind of a dream come true and hopefully more stuff comes from it, you know. Mm. So yeah, it's been it's been mad. It's a crime mecca, isn't it? London yeah, by yeah. default. And like so many other things as well, drill. you know, like drill, grime, yeah. like yeah. soul, neo soul, R and B, yeah. rap, like even just like rock and like yeah. you know what I mean? Like I oh, know you guys got A C D C like Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, <laughs> And like some of the guys I'm friends with back home are massive here, like DMAs, man. Like they're they're a band from Sydney, and I'm like pretty friendly with yeah. a couple of the guys there, and they're like they're selling out like crazy shows here. What's that something in the glue sniffers? What they called? I forget the name of them, but yeah, and they're another punk band. Comment below you, if you know, you know. Yeah. But yeah, there's a bunch of bands coming out from Australia at the moment. Yeah. Right? Like, so like cool. the band the band scene's massive in Australia. Yeah. So I think like as like a rapper and grime and, and this and that like artist, I think, you know, sometimes we feel like a bit underdog mentality, mm. but 
that's why it's mad to be over here working with people that sort of like are from the place that pioneered a lot of the sounds that we use as inspiration, you know. Mm. So, yeah, it's been it's been dope and made a lot and of sick it, music. And intuitiveness as well because like when you're on the ground here, it's just within our lifestyles, you know, this, this is how these genres come about. Yeah. I mean, grime, grime is... In, it's it's had a it has a season or a number of seasons now where it's actually just part of our, our, our lifestyle and psyche. I mean. Yeah, well, I think that's like that's how it comes into existence, right? Mm. Like, you are a product of your surroundings and the people that you are around. And I think like the mentality you can see it when you're here. It's like densely populated, massive city, mm. people from all over the world. Like, you know, just crazy melting pot like i thought mm. melbourne and sydney were like that but here it's like on another level you know like <laughs> you've got half of my country's population in one city you know what i mean and like yeah. australia is a big country yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. like it's it's and i think yeah the competitiveness and everything is like exactly what i'm looking for to push me to mm. you know excel as an artist and yeah. and the fact that i've been able to come over here and make music with people i look up to and must be mind blowing. It's mind blowing, and it's yeah. also very affirming to be. You know, I feel like there's a ceiling in Australia in, mm. in a lot of ways in the space that I'm in, and um, like I wouldn't say that I think I'm the best at what I do, but I do think I work hard, and I think that being able to like being able to keep up here mm. is an achievement for me in itself. Keeping you up, know? yeah, yeah, just keeping up. Like you know, I'm in sessions with artists, and they're just firing out like they're writing so quick yeah. writing quality stuff like firing it out their yeah. taste is dope like they all know the same people i like listen to like it's crazy man it's crazy and it's sick yeah like very inspiring i'm sure i'll be back you know that's a body kind of moment yeah too. and made some great friends as yeah. well you know yeah. so like yeah Obviously, stoked to be here. Personality gets you anywhere, see? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Next on the Killer Keller podcast, come <laughs> on. Um, bruv, you're right. I think there's a lot of things that as localised, as people in, in England as we are, we don't see the novelty factors. We don't see the happy accidents and like, wow, like, but that's a really big thing where yeah. I live, you know, you're just normalizing it. Yeah. Actually, it must be, give me some, give me some ideas of like things that, that is normalized to us, which is completely abnormal to you. In a, from a cultural point of view, from just being down the, you know, wandering down the street of London, any given London street. Well, probably, um, obviously like the classic stuff, like the, the red buses, like the two decker red buses. Like yeah. that's like, when you think of London, like, you know, like I put up a photo on my story of like one red bus and all mm. these people are like, are you in London? Are you in London? <laughs> it's like, they know straight away. I think obviously like the old, um architecture because yeah. australia is like a lot of the buildings aren't that old yeah, yeah. so it's nice to just see like even just like places that you wouldn't even look twice at you know what i mean like a lot of the venues a lot mm. of the buildings a lot of the apartments a lot of the accommodation yeah. it's built it's in old buildings the subway Good man talk. like even in the subway like surely the subway is not that old because it's like you know it's a lot of work to get down there mm -hmm. and build them mm -hmm. tunnels but i was in there the other day and like you know obviously I felt like I was in like Hogwarts and I know that's like where they <laughs> shot that shit, but I was like, this is crazy and it's a beautiful city and um, yeah, just like the hustle and bustle and just there's stuff to see everywhere and I think like even jumping on a bus, getting on the top floor and looking out over the city, going over the River Thames and shit, like it's just, it's 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 cool, bro. Like obviously you guys would be well over it. You, it's just your city, but to to me, it's like it's a place that I've like, gained inspiration from for years like mm. even being on the train line and seeing all these stations that are just to me they're just song names yeah yeah, yeah. like edge like it was at edgeware road like yeah. Ladbroke Grove, baker street, like baker things, street yeah. like all these things that i've just heard from like music or mm -hmm. like camden like yeah all them things it's like i don't even know them as a spot like i know it as a song That's so like crazy. yeah you know what i mean yeah. so i see that and that just gets me excited and inspired you yeah. know what i mean so you've been to camden yet um, I want to go to Camden Markets because I want to yeah. buy some records, yeah, yeah. but I haven't been to Camden yet. Uh -huh. um, there's there's a lot of places yeah, I haven't yeah, been yeah, yet. Yeah, yeah. It take me years to get to everywhere. Been to Brixton. I haven't been to Brixton. Brixton's crazy. Is that north? South. South, that's right. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean like even that, Brixton, like Brixton Bully. Like yeah, I know yeah, yeah, yeah. like <laughs> all that shit from just music as well. Yeah. And I think that was another thing is like coming into it. It's like a lot of Australians like, 
like going into it, like their 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 like perception of the UK, especially because I come from music, is like drill and grime. So mm. like I have people being like, "Oh, like be careful, like out there, mm-hmm. like don't wear your stony and shit." And I'm like, <laughs> "It's fine, bro." Like I've been told from people here, like you you're fine, just like don't wear a rolly or something. Don't go crazy, but with like, Rolex, yeah, but like that's not me anyway. Yeah. And I and so and like obviously, if you're not looking for it, I think in most cases you're not gonna have any problems. But like once you're here for a little bit, you're like. It's like any other yeah. place, you know, like yeah. you just you just do your thing. But yeah, just also like... Also the vibration of people as well. I mean, like you've got a good good heart. There's a good mind. There's a good um, energy. Like you, it's this, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. There's a certain vibration that you kind... That, that, that kind of um, attention attracts. Yeah, 100%. And also like when you get here, you realise that like n- not everyone gives a fuck about like rap music it's like there's also just people here that have just londoners that just go to work at an office job like yeah. there's there's 10 20 times more people here that don't even know what the fuck drill music is mm. or mm-hmm. crime music mm-hmm. is so like obviously that's the majority of the people here so it's not like you're just in a drill clip every time you're out like <laughs> yeah. at a chicken shop and stuff yeah. you know what i mean like yeah, totally. so so it was cool to see that like you know i spent like a week in shoreditch just at a hotel by myself, like um, going out, getting an English breakfast, grabbing a coffee, going to the Sainsbury's, getting little meal deals. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. went to um, Spitalfield Markets, got some crazy dumplings there. <laughs> the food's been sick. The diversity of the food's it's been like sick. It's like a podcast tourist edition. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hard, <laughs> hard, hard. And obviously like, you know, done a lot of music with some with some great talk artists to about as well. That. Talk to me about that. Because my guy just, isn't just stuck in London. Like you've got a Reading, you've got a West Country. Devon. Yeah. Yeah, Oakhampton. Yeah. Yeah, so um, casual. Yeah, casually just yeah. you know. But um yeah, I guess like the whole reason I'm over here because I've obviously been wanting to come here for time, but I wanted to have a reason and like not yeah. just be here like begging for sessions. Yeah. So like that would never happen. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, no. Listen, if you don't know about this guy, check the fucking bars. Yeah, check the bars, check hit the, the beats. Instagram, hit YouTube, serious, yeah. serious contender. Yeah, you know the vibes, but yeah. it's a blessing to be over here and and like pretty much the reason I'm over here is um I think in October or November last year, which is, you know, only like two, three months ago, yeah. it's all moved very fast. Um, Songa had an Australian tour and um, big a up friend. Songa. Yeah, big up Songa, Tight. incredible artist. Big um, and <laughs> I think, you know, they needed a studio. They've been on a long tour and it was, they'd done New Zealand already, I think, and it was their first day in Australia mm-hmm. in Brisbane. And a friend of mine from Sydney who's a manager um, just hit me, uh, I was on my way to the studio. It was funny. I was like having like a real slow morning. I felt like shit. And I was on my way to the studio and I was like, man, like I, I, I need to get some work done today, but I need to like lift my spirits a bit. So I went to, do you have Aesop over here? Like the fragrance business? No. Anyway, I went to like a nice, like a bougie, yeah. like fragrance shop and I got like a, a, a essential oil like diffuser. Cause I was like, I want to buy something nice for the studio to get me motivated. Mm-hmm. And I remember as soon as I walked out of the shop, this guy hit me and was like, yo, this guy song needs a studio, blah, blah, blah. So I was like, okay, Matt, I've gotten something nice from the studio and I've gotten something in return. You know what I mean? That so he hit me blessed. about that. Yeah. yeah. It, was, it was just like an affirming, mo- like it didn't, it didn't feel like that in that moment, but mm. retrospectively yeah, later. Yeah. So, um, Fast forward like, I don't know, a week or so, they're in town. And I remember his manager tour, um, absolute legend. Hold man. tight tour. Hold tight tour. Been looking after you on, on your trip. Over, he's been looking right? after me here, yeah. Up tour. But um <laughs> but yeah, back to then it was like he's like, yo, like um, yeah, we'll come through studio. And then it was just regular. Like he was like, oh, do you know any barbers yeah. here? Like we need to get a trim. And luckily I just like cut my hair short and I just found a good barber. <laughs> so I was like, yeah, I got the guy. And I like booked them a session everything with my barber. Working. Yeah, everything was working. Yeah. I was like, booked them a session with my barber and they were like, oh yeah, we'll come studio. And then I think like, cause they just got in, they were tired. So we, we, we didn't do the first session. And then they were like, oh, we'll come studio after the show. And in my head, I was like, sure like yeah. after a show you know what you I mean? do, like, yeah. of course you're gonna come studio after the show but because i was obviously gassed to work yeah um but i know how it is after a show touring yeah, yeah. if you like touring and stuff, you got your gym ready you know you're gonna go you know exactly as usual after after a gig right <laughs> exactly <laughs> Close doors. exactly exactly yeah. but i went to the show um 
and a mate of mine was opening um, Gatsby and so he invited me to the show and then also Songer's team invited me to the show. So I was like, okay, cool. So I'll come through and um, met them all, you know, usual like pleasantries, like hello, like how's the tour going, da, da, da. And then watch the set. And because I wasn't super across song and stuff, his face was very familiar, I think, probably from Black Box and all yeah. sorts of stuff. But I hadn't listened to a, a whole lot of the catalogue, but I did listen a bit before the show. Yeah. But then when I saw the set, because a lot of the stuff at the time, it was when Vino Bandit's popping off, a lot of drum and bass stuff's mm -hmm. popping off. And he jumps on stage and like, there was obviously a bit of drum and bass, but the majority of the set was really heartfelt, like beautiful, like poetry almost, yeah. you know? And the fans were like, there yeah, for yeah. it so watching that immediately gave me like a a, a much different perception of like what m maybe i thought oh, like leading uh, in like obviously leading in i was like this guy makes bangers and yeah. he's got a great voice and he's a great rapper but the versatility but kind watching of, the set i was yeah. like oh, okay this guy's like pouring his heart out yeah. and like people are fucking with it Fuck. and i'm fucking with it you know yeah so i watched the set and i was like this is this is sick and um and so but the funny thing is that, yeah, the whole time I'm there, I'm like, yeah, this is mad, but like we're probably not going to the studio, you know, yeah, like yeah, this yeah. is gas right now, yeah, yeah, everyone's yeah. hype. And I was I was connecting with his producer, Cam, um, you know, the classic one when I talk to producer, I'm like, oh, what do you use? And they're like, Ableton. And I'm like, my G, you know what I mean? I see you got Ableton up there <laughs> yeah, too. So, Mine's an older grade though. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I love, I love it though. It's, it's the tradesman, not the tools though. Yeah, you know that's I mean? right. But, right. Um, but uh, yeah, so anyway, Fast forward, as soon as he comes off stage and comes into the back room, his manager tour was like, right then, we'll go to the studio, make some bangers. And I was like, yeah, I second that, bro. This is where jet lag works in your favor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> off to the studio you exactly. go. Exactly. <laughs> so like, it was like, it, it was like, nah, we're not like getting lit and just partying because it was just like, let's take that energy from the stage and yeah. go straight to the studio and make Plug some hits. Straight, yeah. He was like, I, I remember him saying, he's like, let's go make some hits then. And yeah. I was like, Bet we're making Wicked. hits. So we just like loaded up his van. I drove straight to the studio. Gang, like 15 people came to the studio. And I've like, I, I've got like a, I've, I've had a long history of trying to build and create studios. And our last one flooded sadly. So oh, we've got no. this new one. It's on the second floor. Yeah. So it won't flood. <laughs> um, and I'm very like happy with it. I run it with my boy Smack and, um, it's just like we 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 put a lot of time. And yeah, because this is a space. separate project, isn't it? This, yeah, this is this is, a, this is yeah. another thing, and yeah. we've got our own studio. Um, so obviously we people book time, mm. we run sessions. I work on my own music. Yeah. You know, we do live streams. We do all proper, sorts of proper, stuff. You know, established yeah, we business. put some we put some yeah. time into it, and so it was lovely to be able to have like a big space to have everyone in, and it's big enough that you can work on music but have people like you know hang out and chat in mm. the in the front room. So we all just pile in there. And it was even mad just to have them come in and be like, man, this is sick. And yeah. I'm like, okay, like, I don't know, like, what you're working with in the UK, but if you think this is sick, I'm happy, bro. Yeah, 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 yeah. And yeah. then um, it was straight to work, bro. And the cool thing was, like, there was a lot of cooks in that kitchen. There was, like, four or five producers in mm -hmm. that room. Mm -hmm. But – and that can be difficult sometimes. Course, you know, you've got yeah. one laptop yeah. and everyone's got ideas. And the usual thing that messes up a session like that is an ego yeah. where someone – is more interested in having their part on the track yeah. than the yeah. track being as good as it can possibly derails, be. Derails, you know, Yeah, and everything. there was none of that. Yeah. It was like me, Smack, Cam, five minutes each, just cooking up a little bit of a beat. Yeah. You know, like just, all right, cool, I've done my bit. Like I've hit my peak, you jump on, boom, little bit. Same thing, just rotating. And then like we're just riding. And like I was just kind of, wow. usually when I come into a session like yeah. that and it's a big artist, yeah. I'll take a backseat in the sense of I'll produce because I'm... Because you do production. Because I do production. Yeah. Well, obviously people know me for rapping, but I would say like I'm 95% producer, 5% mm -hmm. rapper. And so I'm producing, doing this. Um, that's for real shit, you know? Absolutely, that's the plan. And um, so Gatsby and Song would do a song. I produce a lot of that. We all kind of produce it back to back. And then we just start cooking up another one. And um, and Song is writing and he's just kind of like, oh, so you're going to jump on this one? And I'm like, okay, cool, <laughs> mad. Yeah, like, because cause for me, like, I think the way I operate, like, I'm not this kind of person to walk into a room and be able to just like convince everyone I'm the guy. Mm -hmm. Like I, I'm very much more like I would rather get on the computer or start writing show and, and, and show, show and yeah. prove. And I think like 
um, it's a longer game, but it's a stronger game. Yes, you know 100%. what I mean. So, so that's it's nice when I meet someone who um, is is forthcoming with that. Like I've opened for a lot of international acts, and I'm not the kind of guy that's just going to storm into their room and ask for a photo. That's but if, right. But if they recognize, if they hear my set and they like it, and they say like, "Yo, that's mad," then obviously, like, I'll I'll open up a bit. Yeah. Um, and I think like similar things have happened, and the mentality is probably more similar to the UK than it is to. America for yeah, us, yeah. right? So, um, and first of all, like meeting their whole team, they're all nice dudes and mm. just down to earth. Just like proactive this guy, people, yeah, yeah. Like this guy, like Songer, bro, he's like in the top 40 right now. Yeah. And like, like the other day we just kicked it and played FIFA. It's like, you know what I mean? Like he's just a nice guy, mm. like just a sound guy. And um, I think that's like a real nice thing to – to see when you see someone yeah, yeah and it just sure. makes you like even more inspired yeah um so anyway cooked up some mad music and then it just so happened that they were in melbourne the next day and i was flying to melbourne for something completely unrelated wow. so i was at the studio till 7 a.m that night they left at like three but i was there tweaking what i did because i wanted it to be like <sighs> you know what i mean like i wanted to send them something that was banging yeah, yeah, yeah. you know um so I went straight from the studio to the airport and flew to Melbourne off no sleep. Had like a, a magazine thing, mm -hmm. um, like an interview thing. And then I went to their next show. And when I got to the show, they were all like singing the shit I wrote the night before back to me because they loved the accent. What? So like it, the song so we did- really resonated. Yeah, and the song them. we did was like a UKG track. And like, I don't want to speak on it too much because like, it's not released and I don't mm -hmm. like to mess mm -hmm. with the, the juju. juju. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. yeah, but um, but like, yeah, it was just it was just funny, bro. I was like, yeah, they like the song, like oh and they and the accent's like funny, but they're they're enjoying it, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? So I was like, oh, that's mad, that's cool. And I went to the show, um, jumped up again with Gatsby, sick, great show. And that and that Melbourne show, I think I was their favorite mm -hmm. show of the tour. It was just like Obviously, Melbourne's there's like a lot got of it going on, man. I love Melbourne. Melbourne's great, bro. Yeah. It's a very global city. Yeah. Um, show was amazing, even more than the night before. Mm. The connection with the audience mm. and how much they love mm. him was amazing. And then just stayed up again. So at this point, I haven't slept in like three days. But I'm just like, I'm Psychosis. just like hanging. Yeah, I'm just hanging <laughs> with them and having a mad time. And then I just like broing down with Cam. He's showing me all these artists he work with. I'm like, you're sick, bro. Yeah, and that's... then showing him like stuff I'm working on. I was showing like. I was showing, I don't know, you, you might be across this because you've spent some time in Australia, but I remember distinctly showing their whole team 360 versus Cursor rap battle. <laughs> Hilarious <laughs> bit of Australian culture. Legendary. Go Google that. Yeah, Make 360 sure versus very Cursor. Good, very good. Actually, incredible battle. Mm -hmm. And so like I remember I got a photo somewhere deep on my camera roll of a song just looking at me with the TV behind <laughs> him and it's just like 360 and Cursor. But um, yeah, so just hung with them and then – they were in Australia for a bit because they were doing South by Southwest. Mm. And then like a week later or something, Tor's like, yo, you should come and do that song. And I was like, really? Like, you reckon? Whoa. And he's like, yeah. And I was like, well, like looking up flights. I was like, it's kind of expensive. Like, I'm not sure like how serious you are. Like, yeah, go ahead, yeah, yeah. book flights. Like, I might feel like a bit of a muppet if yeah, I go yeah. and it doesn't happen. Yeah. And then he's like, text me like on the day. And he's like, so are you coming or not? And I was like, yeah, well, fuck. All right. So I went and then we did it. And... It was sick and he had like a great show and um, I was just, I, I know, kind of in disbelief in a way because mm. like I said, like I'm not, like I know I'm good at what I do but I'm not really the kind of person to just like push myself into situations and the fact that they were so open just like, I think we just clicked Sometimes as like mates and then yeah. the music lined up too. Mm. So that was really cool and got to spend more time with them and then they all went um, like post to a holiday because you know if you're from the UK mm. and you go all that way you might mm. as well go to Bali right yeah 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 yeah, yeah so yeah. they're in Bali and then I think Songa did some more holidaying with his girl wow and um then they came back to Melbourne and we were like yeah let's line up some studio time and then the week that we were go that I was going to go down to Melbourne to meet him mm. Tor calls me up and he's like yo we just got this toxic song cleared because you know that toxic freestyle he's got yeah. on, um black box right and that's been popping for yeah. years and then they finally got the sample cleared by britney's team so like britney's big britney even had know. to bow down yeah exactly and so he's like we need someone to re-record the vocals and i was like big so i like obviously booked the flight straight away went down helped him out with that shot a bit of the video Crazy. it's actually funny like the video he put up i'm in like a lot of it and i like 
I was like, this is so funny. Like, because yeah. I'm so unrelated to what's going yeah, on, yeah, but yeah. I'm just in the studio, like, yeah, good take. Like, da, 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 da. so blessed. Isn't yeah, it? really cool. Um, just a cool memory to have, yeah. you know. And then did another day in the studio, cut a bunch of demos, cool, just hung out. Like, it was, it was really dope. And then I think after that, I was just like, just talking and like, talking to the guys, like, we just clicked well. And I was like, man, like, I've been wanting to come to UK for so long. Like, it just like kind of yeah. makes sense now. Yeah. And Tor was so like welcoming. He's like, yo, you like, you can stay with me. Like, well, I'll line you up with sessions, this and that. Yeah. Just like so lovely, man. Yeah. Like I'm like, I can't even express how important that is to me. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. And then um, in the meantime, I get booked for the Flowdown tour. So there's all this like UK stuff yeah, just yeah. coming at me, right? And I've I've like I used to work in a burger joint flipping patties and shit. Yeah. And I would listen to like Flowdown and mm. Skepta and Jamie mm -hmm, and like, mm -hmm. you know, Gets and stuff like all day, just like rapping their shit. And then like if it's not their shit, I'm rapping my own shit yeah, in yeah, the yeah, kitchen. Yeah. And so like I know Flowdown from like grime days, like early grime days. And then I see him blow the fuck up and that's the coolest thing to me. Like that made me so happy. I remember um, I was doing a festival run. Well, I, I was along with, a, with, a, with my mm -hmm. girlfriend for a mm -hmm. festival run. And um, it was like when Rumble came out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She dropped Rumble at a festival before anyone knew it. And it just went, oh, it crazy. Just rang off. Crazy. And I was like, this is sick that it's flow down. Cause she's like, she knows it, um, you know, like, well, obviously, like it was a massive song, but for me, it was like, oh, this is flow down, bro. Like, that's so yeah. sick that he's blowing yeah, yeah, up like after being in the game for so long. Yeah. Like, it's so cool. And anyway, so getting booked for that was mad. The, and this is in the middle of all this mm. stuff with Songer's team. Um, and then what perfect alignment. Yeah, very we got nice. Flow down, like you know, sound guy, international now. Yes. Yeah, and when I saw guy. him and you on doing your things together on stage, mm. and you know, just to bring in that was a good story too. Bro. That's, that's a good story that's a, too. Tell the story. Well, um, the the first two shows of the tour we did Sydney and Melbourne, mm. and I think like my general mentality with like a big overseas artist is like, you know, I'll say what's up, but I'll mm. mostly just try to stay out the way. Like yeah. I do my, I'll do yeah. my job, you do yeah. yours. Yeah. Um, but about like two shows in um, after the set. And I think with those guys, it's like, once you've been in the game for a certain amount of time, it absolutely is work. Even yeah. if it's your passion, it's work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, before a set, you're sound checking, you got to get it done, you're focused. And then when you come to the show, you're focused on the show. But yeah. after the set, it's like you're a bit more loosened up. So I think Vibes. like on the second show, um, after we finished the set, I popped in and he's like, yo, like his manager was like, yo, can we get a photo of you two? And I was like, thank God I didn't have to ask. Because I hate asking for a photo, <laughs> yeah, yeah. you know, but I want the photo. Like <laughs> yeah, yeah. it's a sick experience and it's a mad yeah. memory. And and his manager, Nikki, shout out Nikki, legend. I'm talking Nikki, yeah. Um, she was like, yeah, can I get a photo of you two? And I was like, yeah, I guess. Like, and I was like, yeah, of course, bro. Like, get a photo. I so play I, like, a little bit hard to get now. Yeah, yeah, so popped in, got a flick. Um, just had a yarn, had a good chat. Yeah. Like, you know, I was talking to him about, like, how obsessed I was with, like, all the old school grime, Risky Roads, freestyles, mm -hmm, all the stuff mm -hmm. he used to do, like, Bad Man City and, like, all the dubstep serious. tracks he used to drop. Like, serious heaters. Like, I remember, like, really? because, because the tour was so big because of these new songs. But the majority of his set was like all these old, like, and he was, yeah. you know. He, yeah, um, yeah, like the, 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 and DJ Carnage is dropping in all these old dubs and shit. Carnage. It's sick, man. But I've like, you must have been in your element. And yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was in the crowd, like, uh, to be fair, I don't like really go to shows. Mm. I just play them, right? But at that show, like every show like I was again. every yeah. show I was drinking like yeah. after the set just i watched every one of his sets just Bro, like drinking it's the like, best life when you're with one yeah, of your you, you know your fanboys up to 100 yeah. and it's just like yo this you know you can imagine like a lot of these roadies you know sound engineers people that are fans of the music they, yeah. they just live the dream yeah exactly the and then there's a lot of roadies that are just like over it yeah yeah but like for me it was like after every set i just watched his set and like i'd be in the crowd just like I remember I was in the crowd with like some friends of mine and the thing with grime is like if you're a grime head, the DJ will drop a beat and you'll lose your shit before the guys even started rapping. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And my friends are like, what's going on? What's going on? I'm like, oh, this is that like dub edit of that old Ritzer <laughs> Man tune. Like, you know what I mean? And they're like, what yeah. the fuck are you talking about? And I'm yeah. like, ah, like losing yeah, yeah, my yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah. 
So I watched all these sets, like every set I got, I got lit, bro. Like I can't lie, like it was sick. Do you know those and ones where you're holding the camera for and you just ah, yeah, yeah, yeah I was double parked yeah, like yeah, the whole yeah. time. <laughs> and um, and then the Brisbane show, sick venue, Princess Theatre, lovely venue, big underground um green room a lot of space to chill mm. and he just played like Meredith Festival the night before which right. is like a 1am slot and then a 3 hour Dude, flight to Brisbane right? right so um before the set he was just chilling right like chilling and then I did my set cool came down had a yarn with him and I remember like just before he went on he was talking to his tour manager and he's like yo like are you gonna set up that second mic and I was like, my ears just kind of like perked up a bit. <laughs> and I was like, what's that? And then um, I remember like I was sitting down and he stood up and like walked over to me and I'm like looking up at him like it's a movie. And then I like stand up and he's like, Grime, 16s, back to back. And I was like, and I was like, yeah. Duh. Sign me up. This yeah. is the this is the dream that's coming yeah, in like, yeah. around 12 o'clock tonight. <laughs> I was like, I think I got time for that. Yeah. But the funny thing is like, Obviously, like, had a massive grime wave, like, 2017, 2018, mm. 2019. It was all grime. And I think I took a lot of things from grime, but I kind of mushed all these sounds together to make my sound now. Mm. So, for me, I was like, this is the craziest thing, but also, fuck, where's all my grime bars? <laughs> yeah. So, I literally, like, you can see in the video I posted, bro, like, I got my phone out and I wrote out the first bar of, like, all these 16s that yeah, I had Because touched. then you run them off after the first bar. And I made it my lock screen yeah. and just popped it in my top pocket. And it was mad, like, it was, yeah, it was cool. Like, I was just side stage for the whole set, just, like, waiting for him to call me out. And then he had, like, this mad intro. He's like, you know, like, he's like, Brisbane, a.k.a. Badman City. Like, you know, it's fucking mad. And then he's like, you know, you've seen Nerf perform, but you haven't seen him perform with me. Yeah. And then we went back to back 16s. Carnage gave me a mad wheel up on the first one. Like, mad. it was sick, bro. Like, 17-year-old me... Even me now, obviously, but 17-year-old me would have been fucking flipping out if he knew that that was ever going to happen in my Riding life. Riding over carnage as well, just like... Yeah, crazy, bro. Like, seriously nuts. And, like, obviously in that moment, it's like I'm doing my job. Yeah. And afterwards, I'm gassed. But, like, to think about me as a kid, like, thinking that that's happened and, like... Not only did it happen, but that it went well, mm. you know, like, and and then, like, after we kicked it after the show, like, took him to some local spots and mm. stuff, like, just hung out. And it was just, yeah, it's just nice, man. Like, it's nice meeting an artist that you look up to and then having a good time with them as yeah. a person, too. Because obviously, the mm. artist and the person, they're two different things. Oh, he's a lovely, Flo Dan yeah, is a lovely, lovely man. dude. And just good a people. funny guy, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like, yeah, Banter. It, was, it was, it was good times, man. And, mm. Um, so that all was just sick. And then I, I remember like I was up after I got everyone in the crowd to like send me iPhone videos and I like screen recorded all the stories and I was up on Premiere Pro on my laptop till like 5 a.m. Just dr still drunk, bro. Yeah. Just like editing this video together. Happy drunk. Yeah. And I sent it to his manager and she's like, oh yeah, we'll post it with you. And I was like, that's mad. Yeah, so yeah, like yeah, pop yeah. that video up and it's like, that's never coming off. No, my no, IG, no. That's set of fires. That's yeah. set of fires. And I think for me, like coming i think after that i was like i'm booking flights to london hands down yeah it's almost so, like the coast sign right there exactly and like last year i um linked up with a publisher so fortunately that also meant that i was booking in free studio time here at yeah. tile yard so it was like okay i can come here I can get studio time mm. at a nice studio, mm. which means that if I hit artists, I can be like, I've got a spot, not be like, where do you work? Or like have to pay out the ass for some stuff. Tell it's a spot. It's a great spot. It's an industry spot. Too. Yeah, it's a great spot. So, you know, like booked flights, started hitting up artists that I'd heard of, met or worked with mm. before, started doing stuff at Tile Yard. And I think like it just helped – it helped having those cosigns because like say I hit up someone from the UK and they look at my profile, they see me on stage rapping back to back with Flo Dan. It's like, okay, yeah, yeah this guy's probably fine, yeah, yeah. you know? So, and then going in as a rapper and producer makes it easier too because I can work in different elements. Yeah, you multi multitask, you can do either or. Yeah, like if it's a big artist and they don't need a track with me, then I'll just produce one for yeah, them, yeah. you know? And like at, at the end of the day, like I just want to make good music with good artists and that's all I want. Yeah. Like if, if none of this UK stuff had happened, I'm still so happy to be working with some of the people that I'm working with back mm. in Australia. Like I've been mm. working on some great projects mm. and like I just want to be able to wake up every day and, and get in a room with myself or someone else who's just 
doing their thing to the best of their ability and make yeah. some beautiful shit and I want to help make them be their best. So like I'm just – yeah, like – it's all worked out very well. I'm happy to be here and I just want to keep like moving forward yeah. with it and just following like the sort of shit that lights you up. Yeah. So yeah, man, like that's pretty much how it came to be that up I'm to here. this point, yes. yeah. But your profile again, like you were saying, you know, 15 track albums and such, you know, you've mm. been a very prolific artist up till now and not just in grime, you know, like you say, the, the versatility in how you produce, how you uh, write bars, it's, you mm. know, it's, it's all there and collaboratively as well with collaborations. Yeah, lots of collaborations. I think like you learn, like you learn a lot every time you work with someone. Mm. Even if even if you go to a session and you don't put the music out, you're always going to learn something. If, mm. I work, if I work with a producer, I always learn some new tips and tricks mm -hmm. on like production or like Ableton. And if I work with a new writer, I'll just listen to them write and be like, damn, that's crazy. I've got to try some yeah. of that shit. Like, so being here, mm. massive burst of inspiration, um, pretty much straight out the gate, made some sick music, um, had sessions with like Young Dave and Kill Owen straight off the bat. Love wow. both of those guys. But like, Very I mean, sick. we're talking about five or six tunes or more right now. Yeah, right? yeah, Just yeah. And then... Um, bang, 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 bang. Yeah, it was banging them out. I think like that was first two days, two songs a day, just bang. Fuck. And then... Um, worked on some stuff with song art out in the country yeah. that was just amazing to be a part of like crazy artist getting to hear what he's working on before it's dropped is crazy because you know how many Mad. people out there would yeah. love that first um, dibs on your audio, <laughs> yeah, man. exactly crazy. exactly and then just like being able to hang out with them and there was some other really talented producers there too um being able to see the city and then coming back working with more artists and um yeah, it's just so much inspiration, man. Where's the where's the tenacity come from with you, bro? Like, where, um, where does the uh, the desire to the point that there's no obstacles, the roads are clear? It's a good question, bro. It almost feels like a psychologist question. Yeah. I don't really know. I think like you know what it might be. I think. Um, I think I've always been like goal orientated mm. and like not to get like astrology, but I'm a Capricorn and I think that's like a massive trait of a Capricorn is like I like setting a goal and achieving it. And then like, for example, like I I sleep good. Like if, if I was left to my own like device, I would sleep all day. Mm -hmm. But if I go studio and I want to make a good song with someone and I make a good song with them, I might not sleep the next night and yeah. I'll wake up fresher than if I slept a full 10 hours or yeah, eight yeah, hours. Yeah, yeah. So like that's the shit that just lights me up is like Whoa. making great music and just making cool stuff and like being able to express things. So I don't know, like I guess I've had the same tenacity with other things. Like I was, a, I played a lot of football when I was a kid. Mm. Um, I got into football when I was 10 because the Australian team, the Socceroos, qualified for their first World Cup in like 30 with, years. I was going to ask whether you were a sports player. Yeah, yeah. I would imagine that tenaciousness translates. Yeah, actually it probably did come from that because I got into football and I was like, I got in late, like 10 years old is – to be fair, like kind of a bit late to get into a sport if you want to play professionally. Yeah. And I was shit house. Like I was terrible. Like I, I was toe poking <laughs> it for like a year. And then I did this like Sheffield United training camp in mm. Brisbane and I met – and this – I don't know. There was like one coach there that like took a liking to me and he told me to come to his club. So I went from like under 11s Div 4 mm. to like under 13s Div 1 because I didn't make the under 12s Div 1 team but he thought I had some – promise so he just put me up a year in div one and mm. i was like what the it was like one of them ones like i was like i remember being so sad when i didn't make the team and then the coach called my dad up and was like oh we want him to play a year up so i was like i didn't make that team but i made the team in the same div a year right. up and then i had to like because i was little from for that like i remember verse and kids were massive man mm -hmm. and i had to like learn how to just go in like yeah. for the kill because i had no weight on me <laughs> and then um yeah, so I had to like play real hard and I think just seeing the Socceroos get into the World Cup, watching every game and watching how they got all the way to the round of 16 even though they were like the ultimate underdogs and Italy knocked them out, that was bullshit but whatever. We could have been in the quarters which is nuts and I think just seeing that I was like I want to be a Socceroo. 
And I guess that was a goal. And then mm. I was just like, bang. So yeah. like I was crazy. You know, like the off season, I was just out the back, just banging a ball against the wall, like left foot, right foot, left foot, right foot, left foot, right foot. Pretty much got to a point where I was like ambidextrous, which helped heaps as like a as a footballer. And then I just like went crazy with the football, went to a school that had a football academy and what? like just I was playing like um, and that was the only reason I got into the school. It was a public school, but because I was outside of the catchment area, I had to travel like an hour to get there. But I just went there because they had training sessions as classes. Yeah. And I was like, that's a sick way to get out of class. Yeah. So I was doing like four days a week training at school, three days a week training at club, one rep game, one club game. So I was doing like 25 hours of soccer a week. And that was just like my whole life, you know what I mean? Jeez. And I was just like bang, bang, bang. And I was doing really well. And I think at one point, like, I don't know what it was. Like, I had intense coaches and I was, like, captain of the team and stuff. And I think, like, it was getting, like, quite stressful. And I, I eventually, like, realized that I want to play it for fun and I didn't want to go to training. So I ended up dropping, um, like, dropping it at some point and then just playing lower divs and just having fun with it. But that was still, like, my massive goal at that time. That's mind blowing. Yeah. And the drive, determination on that as a as – a mindset for life you know of course you're gonna do well in music you know what i mean like yeah well it's kind of it's one of the yeah i don't know i guess yeah it's like a similar thing right and then the the only thing with can you music, play the same kind of can you apply the same sort of strategy like, yeah i guess repetition so. is key yeah yeah you have to like you have to go like you have to show up even if you don't want yeah. to sometimes and i think almost it's harder in music because especially if you're like a solo artist because you're your own boss like i could wake up and just not do anything if yeah. i wanted to if yeah. i want to have a day off i can have a day yeah. off no one's going to get mad at me no. but i'll be mad when yeah. i don't get paid in three yeah. months time yeah. you know what i mean like <laughs> yeah. so yeah, no, you have to me. build your own discipline and um i think like the soccer when the soccer stuff like football stuff like went out was when I got into hip hop, and then I was just absolutely obsessed. Yeah, we've had a good hip hop chat as well. I mean, yeah. geez, we like pick up all the Australian hip hop crew outside, outside uh, looking in. Um, yeah, man, goes without saying that uh, you know created huge impact um, in culture worldwide. Man. Yeah, massive, uh, especially that Cursor 360 battle, yeah, huge, crazy. But, but yeah, your top hoods, Delta. I mean, DJ was just a couple off the bat. Tom Thumb, yeah, from a beatbox. Yeah, point Tom Thumb's. Tom Thumb is the king. Avalanches. Right? Yeah. Avalanches. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. They're like they're like kind of hip hop vibes too. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. But um, yeah, so I almost like swapped out like soccer for music because I got obsessed with hip hop and then I like got put onto it from a friend and I was just like hooked, mm. man. And then I just like started writing raps as a joke and then it wasn't a joke anymore. And, like, I remember just going to parties, like, trying to rap to people, this and that. And then I met some like-minded people that like my music, I like their music. Mm -hmm. We started working together and then it was just, like, kind of strength to strength, learned how to produce, recorded myself in the cupboard and shit, like, with egg cartons of soundproofing yeah. and stuff. So like, what year was this? This was, oh, like, 2014, 15. Wow. So um, I was just out of school, just starting uni, and then just, like, yeah, every day it was just like when I wasn't like studying or something, like it was just music, music, music. And then um, I was just obsessed with it, man. Like mm. I was just – and like learning how to produce was difficult. So I was like banging my head against the wall trying to learn Ableton for yeah. like two years, you know, and just yeah, – yeah something made me push through it like i get frustrated i turn it off i go do something else but then i get this itch you know like yeah yeah it gets you over a lip doesn't yeah it? You just give just remove yourself from the stress mm. now i come back to it and then just strength to strength releasing music started getting recognition from like artists that i look up to started traveling around doing shows mm. and then kind of this is just another extension of that i guess like every time i remember thinking like if I make one authentic 90s boom bap beat, because I remember going on YouTube and finding all these sick beats, mm -hmm. and I'd be like, why don't mine sound like that? Mm -hmm. And then I was thinking like, if I make one beat that just sounds like this, I could stop and I'll be happy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I did it, and I was like, I need to make another one. You know what I mean? No, <laughs> like, I need more. Yeah, I need more. <laughs> and then the same thing, I remember being like, if I could just play a show, I like to me, like, Playing a show was like up yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. I was like, if I just play one show, I don't care if there's 10 people no, there. No, no. If I get to go on stage and spit my shit, spit my 100 bars straight of random nonsense, yeah, yeah. I'll be happy. And I'll be happy. Yeah. And I had my first show. I was a special guest for this guy I was mm. working with. And I printed out <laughs> all these demo discs 
um, with like Windows Media Player. I doubt any of them worked. I probably just drag and drop them <laughs> on. They were probably dodgy. But I just like went to his show. It's probably like 50 people there. Um, a lot of my friends were there. I got up, did my special guest thing, played a song, played like one, two songs. And I was just so happy that anyone was even there to listen, even that they liked it or not. And then I went out and just started slinging CDs for free, just bang, 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 bang. Mm -hmm. And then there's like, I remember this one guy being like, this is going to be worth a million dollars in 10 years. Can you sign it? And I was like, yeah, this is crazy. And then like, yeah. And then I like went out and just like, yeah. Like, and then after that, I was like, I need to play a show to a hundred people. I was like, I need to play more shows. I need to get on radio, da, da, da. Like every single time the goalpost shifted. Addiction kicks in. Yeah, exactly. And like that can – like I think throughout the years I've like struggled with that too because if, if you set goals that aren't achievable, you're going yeah. to lose yourself. And I, so I think like I've always refined like my strategy but it's always been that thing of like the goalpost shifting, mm. you know. So um, – but I have had to teach myself how to be grateful and mm. – um, enjoy the wins. How quickly do you turn around, for instance, you know, the plan A, the plan A uh, will inevitably fail within the first impact of any, of any war. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so of any how, contact uh, with the enemy. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, so how, yeah. Do you, how, do you, how do you refer back to a plan B real quick? Good point. Um, man, like the plan A never really seems to work. And yeah. I think from the outside looking in, it probably looks like it always does because I know looking at famous artists, I'm like, man, they just like put some shit out and everyone eats it up and it just works. And then you hear them talk about music and you're like, no, it didn't. So I guess like, I guess, um, yeah, I don't know. Like I, I think for me, it's like if plan A doesn't work, just like, tweak it do the same thing again or work twice as hard i remember listening to a podcast recently it was called high performance it's a uk podcast and there was a guy on there i can't remember his name but he pioneered darts and boxing in the uk wow businessman old school guy um yeah old school guy real geezer like his voice is crazy yeah 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. he was like yeah early doors like (laughs) all that and um i remember him just saying like uh, he had like 10 rules for life but one of them was um, you don't need to burn the brightest but you do need to burn the longest. So I think for me it was like even in sport, right, I never won a grand final. You know, I, we won like premierships but they're not as uh, important in Australia yeah. for whatever reason. Never won a grand final in athletics, never came first, mm. never – I've never really like won anything. I've been nominated for music awards, never won. Mm. And that can be discouraging, but I just kept going. Kind of in an underdog way, you get celebrated. Cult classic, you get celebrated a particular on a particular measure, which still gives you enough uh, coverage to, to to get to that that point. Yeah, but you've got to be able to pinpoint and set your set your sights right. Yeah, and I don't know why. I don't know why. Like. I don't know, like I was never the fastest kid. I was never the strongest. I never like, never was like that number one. Mm. But I think the fact that I wasn't meant that I always just kept working. Yeah. And I think that like, there's probably a lot of people that think I am number one. You are number one. But like. You're up there, bruv. Like, you, like without question. Like, Yeah, I appreciate that. You guys that. made that judgment. You go, go on fucking Instagram and check out Nerve. It's yeah. a serious fucking contender out here. But, um, I, but I think also like, I think being able to process and cope with the fact that you weren't number one is probably what's going to eventually make you better than that yeah. one day. Because yeah. if you can be – like I think that's why, you know, like that's why I want to <coughs> – that's why I'm happy that I produce because like I might not be the artist in a session mm. but if I can produce the artist and make them even mm. better, that's only going to be good for me. You know what I mean? As well as them. Like, it's 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 mad. So, like, I don't know. Yeah, like, n- never felt like number one in a lot of situations. But I think I never stopped either. Versatility, yeah. Yeah, I never, I never went. And I never liked being bad at things. I think that's why I never actually learned an instrument. That's why mm. I went to producing. Because I tried to learn keys. Tried to learn guitar. I never practiced. Like, I would go to the the lesson and be like, yeah, whatever, whatever. Yeah, yeah, I'd go yeah. home and just put it away. Because yeah. I, I just wanted to walk in and do a solo. That's it. But I didn't want to have to learn my fucking... Like, I didn't want to have to learn the, the, the keys yeah. and the chords. And um, 
and I knew that that was stupid. Like my mum would always tell me that's stupid. You have to like, you have to- <laughs> Big you up Mumsy. Yeah, big up Mumsy. But when I picked up a, like when I got Ableton, it was like, okay, I can like make like a s funny little drum pattern now and I can yeah. hear it back. Yeah. So yeah, I, I think that it was just quicker to like kind of become something I could listen to and listen back. So mm. I just stuck on that and just went crazy. And even that, like that was tough too. Like I would be making beats, listening to them and then playing the ones on YouTube and being like, why the fuck doesn't my stuff sound like That's that? Strange. And then I would just have to Google everything, YouTube everything and just learn that way. Like I never went to school for any of that stuff. And um, I think the school stuff does help. But I've also noticed like... Sometimes it seems like going to school for something might ruin like the art of it because there's like, I mean, it's definitely good. Like, I bet if I went to sound engineering school, I'd probably to pick up some things. But I also think like the way that I learned and cut my teeth with it's probably the reason I sound how I do. And like some people yeah. seem to like that, you know. So, um, yeah, I don't know. Like I think the tenacity of never coming first gives you the drive to always have to be better. Yeah. Because if I was coming first from a young age, you know how people always say like, oh, the popular kids in high school, yeah. like they end up like kind of being bummed. Bummed out. You know yeah. what I mean? And like that's not necessarily true, but I think if I was just like championed my entire childhood or something, yeah. I'd probably just get lazy. But it's like, and yeah, I don't know. Like I I don't, It's and it's also like I don't, necessarily feel the need to be the best as well like i just want to be the best i can be and that's the biggest desire isn't it to yeah challenge yourself right? yeah and also um should be anyway as a producer rapper as well a producer mm. artist i think that being able to help other people be their best is just as rewarding as making myself like as a front yeah. artist the best like i could come to london and and work with a bunch of artists and do all these collabs or like I could come here and produce yeah, for like 15 people yeah. and then have 15 yeah. releases yeah. with 15 different artists. The gods respond to that attitude as yeah. well. I do believe, you know, the act of giving it rather than you know, self-serving. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. And um, I think I have had to learn that because I think, you know, younger, um, obviously, you know, even though I didn't come first and stuff, I was always grinding and I think I was like pretty self absorbed like with the music stuff um i always had i always feel like i had the right intentions but i definitely have tunnel vision mm -hmm. like crazy like when i'm when i'm on something i'm on it bro mm -hmm. like, like how i said i was editing that flow down video until mm -hmm. 5 a.m mm -hmm. like i just decided i'm not sleeping i'm drunk dog with I'm not sleeping. yeah exactly like right. i've come home from like this after party and i'm just bang like because i can't live with not finishing it right now because like i think i got that from my mom like if it's worth doing it's worth doing right now yeah, and it's yeah. worth doing properly what's the missus you know? think she must, must drive girls mad <laughs> um yeah 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 but also like you know i think if you find the right no person, denying on that one right there yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i think if you find the right person that that believes good in you, then they're always going Very to good <laughs> they're always going to appreciate it but yeah you got to keep your priorities straight yeah. you know what i mean um so yeah man i think that's like kind of the mentality yeah and um yeah shit here we are yeah and sit here we are yeah um one of few uh mcs that have made regular ventures into the social paths of um uk artists and being present here being present south by southwest um I mean, who else do we need to look out for? In your, I mean, you know, your collaborator. Who, who, who are we looking out for at the moment? In the UK or Australia? Australia. Let's go. Let's go straight. In to Australia. Turf, yeah. um, obviously, I'm always going to put on JK47. He's okay. a crazy artist. I've done a bunch of songs with him. Um, I think he's just a generational talent. Nice. Um, and his brothers as well, ECB, Blood Brothers. Most talented family. Wow. You know what I mean? Most okay. talented family. Um, it's I'm, your Google time, people. Yeah, yeah ECB. You know? So, like, I'm taking them on my next national festival run. Wow. Um, as, long as, uh, as well as an artist called Chloe Terrell. She's a crazy singer. Sick. Very talented artist. Um, I'm currently working on a project with a rapper called Barker. Mm -hmm. She is nuts really if you look her up on youtube she's got a freestyle she just dropped that went absolutely ballistic she's got a bunch of releases that are crazy and she's a very important person for the australian music industry and also like her community as a whole right. so um 
like she represents a lot of people and in a really powerful way. She's got mm. a crazy story and she's overcome a lot of things. Wow. And I'm like so happy to be You're working with her. Good. I'm so happy to be working with her and just uh, it's just nice. It's 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 gratifying to even just like you know be close to someone like that mm -hmm. that's overcome so much. You mm -hmm. know, it makes you go like, I need to work harder because. Yeah. Um, obviously I've worked hard with music but some people start with nothing man. Yeah, yeah. you know and then and then like them getting to just a point where they're supporting like a family mm -hmm. is the is a massive hurdle it's a huge jump you know people, and yeah. she's like supporting a family and killing in the music game wow. so that's a massive shout yeah. out and I'm so grateful to be working with her um Man, that, like off the top of my head, that's like who I, there's there's so many people, you know what I mean. But off the top of my head, like yeah, those are people. Trouble, though, yeah, know. exactly. You say too many names, yeah. you have to say yeah, all yeah, of them. Yeah, yeah. But like coming to my head now, like obviously, yeah, JK forty seven, long time collaborator, mm. ECB, his brothers, incredible, taking them on tour. Chloe taking her on tour, and Barker, I've been working with her a lot. And um, I think I mentioned to you earlier, my boy DOA. Yeah. I just um, produced a 15 track album for him. Yeah, serious. Very guy. sick artist. Um, very. And, and graph writer. Yes, and 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 amazing writer. He's got a great story, and um, conviction yeah. is the one word that yeah. I would give for him. Like his conviction is. We conviction serious. and in, uh, with a one word an S convictions. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're funny for that, bro. <laughs> But yeah, so I think those would be, and then the UK, obviously working Songa, massive shout outs to Songa. Yeah, I wouldn't yeah. be here without him. Nice. I wouldn't be here Tor. without Tor, Cam, yeah. mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. and um, obviously been working a lot with Kilo and big fan of his music, mm -hmm. love his music. Very happy Fantastic, to have songs with yeah. him. Young Dave as well, been working with him. He's sick. Um, and yeah, man, like obviously happy to work with whoever, bro. Wow. So, yeah. It's been sick. Well, it's been a pleasure having you on the podcast. First time. Yeah, man. Huh? Absolutely. I, hopefully next time we've got some plaques to hang up here. Yeah. For the next time we chat. <laughs> I'll tell you. Talk is real and that's what we want out here. Yeah, you know what I mean? Killer Keller podcast. Ally in was out of fashion. The mighty nerve. Come on, get some. You know what I mean? You know Big what shout is. out to Australia. My peoples, the family, the crew. Um, yeah, and all my associates, acquaintances and friends that are out there will be over soon. Uh, look, we're out like it was out of fashion. Listen, you stay lucky, all right? Crime don't pay, but neither do they. All right, don't talk to anyone I wouldn't. You stay lucky, people. Peace! Love that. <laughs> <laughs> bro, you're slick with it, bro.